For decades, Yosemite has been a place where important people achieved even more important performances. This is the story about a few of those VIPs. John Muir John Muir was a Scottish writer and environmental activist. He's considered father of the Yosemite National Park. When he arrived in the valley in the 1860s, he was so impressed that he would stay there for years. He wrote articles and books about it, and at his insistence, the valley officially became a national park in 1890. He even gave old President Theodore Roosevelt a tour. John Muir was also the first real wall climber in Yosemite. He was the first to reach the summit of Cathedral Peak on his leather shoes. In his book, The Yosemite, he wrote, but no temple made with hands can compare with Yosemite. Every rock in its walls seems to glow with life. John Salaté was a Swiss blacksmith who found his way to Yosemite mid-40s. There he became famous with his lost arrow pitons. Salaté made his stronger pitons out of the axes from a Ford. The lost arrow pitons were revolutionary at the time and they are still being made to this day. Besides his pitons, Salaté was known as the first man to ever climb the Lost Arrow chimney. He did that together with Axe Nelson in 1947. A few years later, the legendary Royal Robbins named the route after him, the Salaté Wall. That very same Royal Robbins was the center of attention during the 50s and the 60s also known as Yosemite's Golden Age. He was the driving force during those years and lifted climbing to a higher level. As a climber, Robbins had a few methods and philosophies. He said, getting to the top is nothing, but the way in which is everything. He placed as few pitons as possible so he could climb in full surrender and without too much equipment. That's how we climbed El Capitan. And a few years later, in 1961, he proved that the long route can also be climbed without fixed ropes when he and two others climbed the Salaté walls. As methodical and careful as Royal Robbins approached climbing, so rough and reckless was Warren Harding. Batso, as he was called, dragged crates of wine up the walls and organized notorious parties with women and sports cars. A big rivalry arose between Batso and Robbins in the 60s and 70s. That led to the bar being pushed higher and higher. Robbins blamed Harding of drilling too many pitons in the walls, but Harding didn't agree. Harding climbed many routes as first and is known as inventor of the bat tent. That tent is used to spend the night on the vertical walls. Bat stands for basically absurd technology. Many legendary climbers passed Yosemite between the 70s and now. For a couple of years now, Alex Honnold found his way to the valley as well. Honnold wrote history when he free soloed El Capitan in 2018. Free solo means without ropes or any form of safety, so every mistake would end up fatally. Besides El Cap, there are numerous other big walls that Honnold free soloed as first. He also has a couple of speed records behind his name. Honold is founder of the Honold Foundation, an organization that focuses on the importance of solar panels.